So today I'm going to show you five cool little rhythms for the Fender Rhodes piano. Now you might think that's a bit niche, but A, as keyboard players, we just don't talk about rhythm. There's a million YouTube videos about jazz licks, harmony, you name it. There's almost nothing about rhythm, but it's actually such a huge part of playing and it makes you sound a hell of a lot better if you master it, believe me. And B, if you want to be a true Jedi, you need to approach each keyboard instrument in a bespoke manner. You can't play a Rhodes like you play an organ, like you play a clav and so forth. So if you really want to study this, you can buy the video, the link is below. Um, I've included the loops that I play along with, so you can just play along at home and really get into it deep. Otherwise, just enjoy the video. Okay, so this pattern I use all the time. It works over tons of grooves. It's just a great little syncopated pattern that pushes the beat makes the tune feel a bit uplifting. Uh, I'm going to play over these chords, which is E minor 9, F sharp minor 7, and B7 altered. And it goes like this. So it's a simple rhythm really where you're getting some of those 16th notes in which makes the groove feel a bit faster. It's simple but it's all about playing it in a groovy way, you know. It's everything to just sit there and practice until it really feels great. You know, you can play it like a robot. Or you can give it some feel, some swing. You have to kind of think about maybe laying behind the beat sometimes. If I quantize that, it would feel completely different. It wouldn't feel as good. This is where humans come in quite handy. You know, you get that extra feel by just laying back a little bit behind it. It's those 16th notes. And if you imagine like you're working in a DAW and you've got a quantize and you can select MPC, 55%, whatever, you know, or Logic 16C. That's what you're trying to do as a human, you know, give it that feel, give it that little bit of layback, that little bit of swing, and it just gives it that extra pop. You can use your left hand and tap against the keyboard to keep yourself in time. You know, I sometimes do that if I'm just playing with the right hand. So when you're doing those little 16th things, if you just tap a beat before it, it will really help you stay in time. Timing is so important. That's what I want to hammer home, you know, really practice playing absolutely locked in, you know, and just stay on it for like 10 minutes until it's really hypnotic. You're right in it. And if you're feeling brave, uh, you can try it with your left hand and put that little riff that I put in. That's just fourths. So it's just fourths there, A and a D. Going up a tone and then having a third at the end, which is D and F sharp. So just practice that first. And then just practice the left hand on its own. Once you can groove like that, try to bring in the right hand. It's a great rhythm, use it all the time. So this next one is a jazz funk Patrice Russian kind of vibe, uh, which I love this kind of stuff. The chords I'm going to use is D major 9, B flat major 7, 
G minor 9, E flat major 9, and then the second time it's the same, except at the end I'm doing a turnaround which is, uh, that's like a E minor 11, and then uh, A11, sometimes I'm altering that as well. So you know, it's just a super little lilting rhythm. Ba ba ba, simple as that. Ba ba ba. But notice what I'm doing is I'm trying to put in little passing notes and also almost hinting at melodies in between the chords. So, in on an octave. It's the sort of thing that can just make more of a part, even though it's super simple and you've got that rhythm going, but you've still got this little lyrical thing that's tying it together, giving it a little bit more. Depends on what the vocal's doing, obviously. If you can tailor it around the vocal phrases, that's the perfect thing. And then if you're feeling brave, you know, I'm going up to a high right hand and the left hand takes over. All this stuff is helping your left right hand independence as well. You know, it's great to be able to practice these things and try and get two parts going on, even if they're very simple like that. Then I sort of was breaking out into another little line again. very simple line that just kind of follows the chords but try and keep it repetitive and then it makes it hooky. So then in the song, you know, there's four things you can do that are just variations of the same thing. You can play just padding the chords, maybe doing the, that little passing thing. You know, it's nice, just keeps a bit of movement going, then... You know, when you got bored of that, just bring in another little something. The riff. That's how you can make a song out of four chords, you know, because you can just have all these little variations and it keeps the interest going. Okay, for my next trick, I'm going to show you the most hackneyed Latin rhythm there is. It's a very obvious one, but it's a good thing to practice to uh, get your hands moving around a bit. I'll show you what I mean. So the rhythm is... And the chords I'm using this time are G minor 9, a minor 7 flat 5, and then uh, this kind of D7 with a raised 5th, and a flat and a sharpened ninth. So... Now I'm going to break it up, keep the same rhythm, but start playing that kind of merengue style uh, broken rhythm. Same rhythm. It's just broken up. And 
And what I'm really doing there is I'm playing around with the seventh. Uh, it's a very kind of generic thing really for Latin. So it's sort of going from a just a root to a major minor seven. Minor seven and then minor six, playing around with those. You know, and then bouncing in between those and these the rest of the chord. So three, four. And then the left hand is just kind of almost doing what a bass would do. Root fifth. Those kind of things. It can move around really, it doesn't really matter as long as it's within the chord. I'm kind of filling in the gaps, so I'm still keeping that rhythm. Bop, 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 bop. And what the right hand doesn't play, the left hand will play. So think of it as like playing the congas. You know, it's like you're you're kind of creating that rhythm between your two hands. It's quite tricky, but once you lock into it, you get that pattern and you don't have to think about it. Okay, now you might laugh at me for showing you this next one. It's the most simple pattern there is, just eighth notes. But there's playing eighth notes and then there's playing eighth notes, right? It can sound like this. Okay, totally straight. Or it can sound like this. So let me show you in the track. See how making the notes longer or shorter will create a different rhythm. So instead of it being It feels like a different rhythm because I'm going One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four and I'm hitting that note harder and I'm playing it for longer. I'll tend to maybe be slightly behind the beat as well when I do the accented one, which just again gives it a bit more swing and groove. And occasionally I might flick a 16th note between maybe before that longer note. You'll hardly notice it, but you can feel it in the groove. And then again, if you want to put in a little right hand thing, you can switch to the left hand and just syncopate, play 16th notes on the uh, right hand in between the eighths. Check out the D'Angelo album Voodoo, if you've never heard it. It's got the most crazy kind of laid back swing on it, whereby, for instance, the drummer might be right on the beat and the bass is way behind, you know, the guitar's in a different place and there's all this flamming going on, it's really interesting.
So basically I'm trying to push the syncopated beats as far back as I can to really make it swing. For instance, if it was straight, it'd just be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. But I'm going one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, as far back as I can. And I'm trying to accentuate the effect by flamming between the left hand and right hand. So the right hand, I'm going like that. You know, I'm not playing it just straight, I'm, I'm doing that. And then what I'm trying to do is play the left hand slightly before the right hand. It's really hard to do it well, but kind of like this. Then you can kind of create that flam effect within yourself, even to a totally straight B. One, two, three, four, 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 one. And then you can, you know, so I'm making a 16th rhythm there as well. I'm really trying to make that as late as possible before the next beat. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So practice that super laid back swing. You should be able to hear it even just with your own playing, no drum machine. Mm -hmm. 